Washington. Yep. We're almost home. What you guys just saw in that first clip was me going and entering Washington with two people who I thought were my close friends at the time, people who I confided a lot into. And I put that clip there, and there's certain things I'm purposefully putting into this video to really showcase that this isn't just internet drama. I know, especially within the occult community, like internet drama, drama in general, is just such a big thing, right? Uh, just, you know, just drama in general when it comes to the internet. Like, that's, I feel as if people will see this type of stuff and it will, they'll process it, but it won't really like sink in. And so I'm purposely adding these things to showcase to you guys that the characters, because they are characters created, um, Alana and Akelta, these are just characters that are presented to the world. I know these people in person. I've lived with these people. I confided in these people. I, I gave everything to these people. And I want for this to even be considered like internet drama or just like cancel culture or anything like that. It's very dismissive of the abuse that I went through of the trauma, the psychological torture. Um, <laughs> cameo from Tula, but what's the video without Tula? Um, it just goes so much deeper. I know these people. I lived with these people. I ate with their families. <laughs> um, it's very real for me. Um, I'm going to try my best. I have my notes here on the side. I'm going to try to do as minimal cuts or anything like that as possible because I feel like that's going to like, I don't know, like, I'm going to just try to get this video out because I need to tell my truth. It's been, I've had my voice suppressed for so long and now that everything has come to pass, I want to just get this video out to tell my truth so I can finally just let this part of my life go um and i want to be able to have this video out also to help other people even before i've made this video i've had some people reach out to me personally talking about how much it's helped them and how much it's affirmed in their path and their experiences with dealing with this cult because i will call satan and sons a cult because it's become a cult whether that was their intentions initially or not, it's quite literally what it is, and I'll get into it more later. Um, I've had people reach out to me personally who have been abused and bullied uh, from being in this cult, from being associated in the community in the form of Satan and Sons, um, and how much it's just really helped with them and really affirmed a lot in them to let them know that they are not crazy. Um, and I know that feeling a lot because I... I've had to deal with that feeling for a very long time with them. And so I have my notes here. So if you notice me looking down, you know, I've <laughs> this years of trauma that I'm having to unpack and I'm trying to um going to try to just like breeze through some of the details but still have the story like fully connected to really um so it's fully kind of cohesive, but I, you know, for me to talk about everything that's happened, it, that, this video would be hours long. So I'm going to try to just hit the main points um, while also explaining a little bit on just the whole experience of how this came to be, because I know a lot of people are going to be like, well, Velka, how did you end up in a cult again, honey? Right? Like, I feel like a lot of people have this misconception of what a cult is nowadays. I feel like a lot of people uh, imagine a cult to be where, you know, you're drinking the Kool-Aid, darling. But in the day of the internet, cults are so easy to cultivate because cults can have many reasons as to why they're created. Usually the main focus point being just to um, have a sense of control, right? In this case, for Satan and Son's case, it's a sense of control, a sense of feeding their ego, and also for money. That's what a lot of cults nowadays on the internet are for, is just to, is kind of just a giant money scheme. Um, so I'm going to try my best to just maintain composure in this video. I'm going, like, I'm really going to be trying to just stay neutral, um, not really giving too much emotion because I know quite literally that they feed off, like, they <laughs> they feed off the emotion. That, that That's something that they would thrive off of. And they have taken too many of my tears. They have been the cause of too many breakdowns for me 
for them to even be deserving of seeing me be emotional when dealing when discussing this about them because <sighs> anyways I'm going to try to keep my best to not insert my personal statements my personal opinions on this and just keep it as you know just try to maintain my composure as much as possible um but just you know please just be understanding in that um why I'm trying to be very mature in this um the <laughs> it's, it's gonna probably come out at some point you know so just be fully aware of this I've had some people also message me personally asking me about my opinions on Satan and Sons and what I think about their workings and if they should be concerned about workings that they've had in the past or things that they've booked from Satan and Sons and I just want to give this perspective you guys I completely understand like entirely I understand why you would reach out to me and ask me for you know seeing some of the things that have come to light that I've made come to light I can understand your concern and asking me but I want to give this in perspective in that for you guys to be asking me this opinion for my opinion on this I cannot I to be fully transparent I can't give you a non-biased opinion um you're it would be as if asking a victim of abuse to give a non-biased opinion on their abusers and what they think about their abusers and I'm mentally not at a point where I can give my opinion on these individuals <laughs> from a spiritual aspect and so I just want to preface this ahead of time that I'm going to be presenting information to you guys and it's up to you guys to make the choice right I as I always have said and I truly personally mean it is that you cannot tell anyone about their spiritual experiences and for me to tell you that this practitioner or these practitioners are just not worth their weight in gold or worth the price I'd be no different than these individuals that I'm talking about now I would be no different than them. I would be putting myself on a pedestal thinking as if I would be this be the one that could say like who is the one who is the better practitioner who is like what have you, right? There's at the end of the day again spirituality is a very personal thing. There's no way of proving proving who is more powerful. There's no way and you know if there is a way to have like complete just 100% validation on people's practices and workings and there'd be spirited like they would be extremely famous and be extremely successful let's put it that way um so I will present information to you and how I'm processing things and I will leave it up to you guys to make the choice for yourself on if you want to how you feel about the same and sons and their workings and all that but please don't come to me um or take this video as or expect for me in this video to tell you what to do when it comes to their spiritual practices because in terms of their spiritual practices that is such while it is important it is such a low priority on my totem pole for these individuals and what i need to speak on because you know <laughs> does that make sense i'm not gonna i know I'm, i have i'm gonna try to like just keep this going because i know i'm so long-winded um so i really want to first talk about um the individuals themselves um alana and akelta um i'm going to be calling them sally and jamie for this video because for one i feel as if that for me to call them by their these personas by these character names that would be feeding into this illusion that they've created for themselves and that they are these powerful beings i feel as if they need to remember that they are also just human just because you call yourself a priestess a high priestess because you just woke up one day and decided to make your title yourself that way does not mean that you're any less human than the next person and people need to realize that that when you see someone with a title like priestess that's them just playing to be quite blunt that's just their way of feeling more immersed in their role that's kind of like them role playing if i'm from my perspective i think it's just role playing there's no like this in this day and age when it comes to these type of titles like priestess has cultural meaning in certain practices and so in this sense when 
they just decide to call themselves high priestess or priestess. There's nothing depthful about this besides just to create this image of being more powerful. And as I've said, I know these people from in person. I've lived with these people. I ate with their families. Um, I'm close with <laughs> with uh, so, uh, Akelta Sally's family. Um, her father and her stepmother. I have a, still a close relationship with personally, just with myself and them. Um, these are really real. These are very real people. I know them first as Sally and Jamie. Alana and Akelta are second. And um, I also feel the need to talk about something real quick. Satan and Sons is also always has been known as like having this coven. And something I want to just touch on is that the, you know, the coven has always been marked as with Akelta, Alana, Yelidra, and Satira. There's always been these four. And I guess Alana at one point wasn't existing. So Satan and Sons started out with these three personas. And so something I just want to point out now is that Yelidra and Satira, they don't exist. They they are based off of, allegedly, I'll say, friends of Sally, but they haven't existed since they haven't posted or anything like that on the forum or participated in years. These characters are, I personally have the belief that these were just quite literally created just for marketing, to give the, for Sally to present her information and have it come off as such a way where it's not just her speaking about her personal opinion, her personal gnosis. It was such a way where it's like, see, I have this group of people who are supporting me. Um, and they also would use these characters to market to sell things. You know, if you look at their store listings, you'll see that there's little quotes from uh, Yelidra and Satira. But in actuality, these individuals have been played through Alana or Jamie and Akelta or Sally. So Akelta or Sally would always post as uh, Satira and emails and all that. And Alana or Jamie would always post as uh, Yelidra whether it's in emails or anything like that. And so I just want to have this clarified right off the bat in that Satan and Sons has literally been built off of a lie. When I first joined, started working with them, um, I was even, I wasn't even aware of this myself. And, you know, I was welcomed in by uh, Yelidra, which at a later point, Alana or uh, Jamie present, told me, she's like, oh yeah, that was me. <laughs> Sorry, as if it was just something to just like laugh and just joke about that you literally lied to me for no reason and like emailed me and welcoming me in, welcoming me in, welcoming me in to a place like it was just a, such an unnecessary lie. Um, so <laughs> let me see here. Um, something I want to um, point out as well is that. Um, I want to point out these small details because right now it's not going to seem like it makes sense. But as I always tell people that um, you need to pay attention to this, like the small details and things, because in someone's spiritual practices, there should be consistency. And so there's, there's going to be a reason as to why I'm going to be showcasing certain things in this video and having you guys take special note on things. And so I want you guys to note in that um, the stories and the posts that you see from Yelidra and Satira are, there's n like, it, it's just not real. It's not legitimate. And that in of itself isn't um, ethical, in my opinion. You're, you shouldn't have to fake quotes. You shouldn't have to fake entire characters to sell something for of spirituality. You should have, in my personal opinion, someone should just feel naturally drawn to it. You shouldn't have to rely on click funnels or any type of marketing ploys, pretending as if there's like a deal going on when, you know, it's, uh, I need to like <laughs> digress from that because I'm about to just get into like a rant, a separate rant. But just please take note on just the layers on, because there's a lot of these, there's a lot of layers to this, a lot of manipulative layers to this cult. And that's why I'm referring to it as a cult, Satan and Sons as a cult, because there's just so much inauthenticity when it comes to this. Um, so 
when it comes to these characters, if you ever have wondered why there's never any information or any type of video or anything like that with these long-term members of the coven of Yelidra and Satira, it's not because they're shy, it's because they don't exist. And that's a common theme when it comes to the mentors and these other individuals in Sally's life that she will refer to, um, these spiritual mentors and stuff, how there's never actually any real information. Um, linked to them they, it's always been this sense of like oh they were just like disappear or whatever so um i'm going to again allegedly say that they don't exist i've never once seen them i've never once spoken to them and i've been told in private conversations and have been shown and many people can confirm that Yelidra and satira these characters don't exist they may be inspired based off of friends of sally's in real life but they don't exist so um, I'm going to start from the beginning of May 2018. That's when I emailed them and reached out to them in doing social media work for them. At this time, I was living in Texas and um, I had decided to, I always say this is the start of my journey of finding myself, you know, I was an alcoholic. Um, I was over 300 pounds. Um, and I was just really lost and I knew I needed to do something. And so um, I felt called to reaching out to them to do uh, social media work. And at this time I was planning my move out to California. Like I was just going all in with this. And so when they reached out to me and they said that they wanted to work with me, um, that was when this all kind of started. And so that, that was the base of me uh, first connecting with them um, was through social media. Now I knew them before I knew of them beforehand because I was a member of the community for I don't know how many years, a few years, a couple years, some a couple I don't know, girl, some amount of time. Um, so I knew of, like they knew of me, I knew of them for a little bit. Um, and so it was during May, May 2018, when I started giving them a consistent social media presence. And this is the part that I'm going to, like, I'm going to be acknowledging my own faults and my own things that I'm ashamed of. And is that I feel like I played a very direct role in helping them manipulate people by giving them a social media presence. Because before I came along, their Instagram was dead, their Facebook was dead, because Sally would just, does just buy followers. And so there was no activity, like without me working on their social media, they looked like a scam. And so I came in, I added so much authenticity, not only with my own presence, um, but giving the illusion that they were creating consistent content uh, through my own ability through social media, uh, since I'm a child of the internet, I just, social media is something I'm very good at. Um, I've gave this illusion that they've been always giving out consistent content and adding a lot of legitimacy. And so this is the part right now I want to acknowledge my own fault and apologize to anyone who has felt called to connecting to Zane and Sons because of the role that I played. And so... I just want to apologize for that. Um, there's a lot of parts I'm going to be apologizing for because I'm just absolutely ashamed of being even associated with them, even though I was in a spot where I felt like I couldn't... I'm going to move on. Um, so um, at this time as well, I would also help moderate their forum while also doing emails for them, helping them do emails, which is also how I partially found out um, through that the, these you Legion and Satira was fake because they would sign as, uh, Jamie and Sally would sign as these individuals whenever they didn't want to set boundaries as themselves, which is a common theme for them. They're both extremely cowardly in that they will pretend as if they will They'll pretend as if they were very empowered. You know, Sally will write about will write write about mental mastery, emotional mastery, and all this. When in reality, these two individuals who are almost forty don't speak their truth. This very much so reminded me. Their dynamic reminds me of two people in high school who didn't have a very fulfilling high school experience, and so now they created a clique with just themselves, and where they convince themselves that they're better than everybody else. Um, so, uh, 
<laughs> I totally jolly try my best to keep my own personal opinion out. So as I was saying, I was helping them through emails, form, and I also was helping them moderate the Discord. Um, I would be paid $400 a month at this time um, because I was told that's all that they could afford uh, for me. And I was always okay with this. Let me be clear. I was always okay with this just because I'm the type of person, when I believe in you, when I see he, he, like I always talk about how I just love passion. I am just so inspired by passionate people. They always made it seem like we we're in this together, that we we're going to grow together. And I even told them from the very beginning that my intention was to create a YouTube channel and doing all this. So I was okay with $400 a month. I didn't really push it. But to give you perspective, you guys, I have personal connections. I have friends who also do social media work for small businesses and very big businesses. And just as a reference, one of my friends who said that they were okay with me sharing this knowledge is that she would be paid over $150 a day for doing four tweets on Twitter. And that would be it. I have another friend that would be, that would be paid I'm not, I'm not, you get the point. You, you know, I don't need to keep referencing, but you get the point that I was being severely underpaid for all the work, all the value that I was providing to this business. And keep in mind, again, I was creating original content for them because, again, they weren't creating any type of... They, ha they don't consistently create content. Um, and as stupid as this is going to sound, um, as stupid as the subject is, Discord is kind of where the issue began. Um, and where I started realizing that I wasn't, um, part or I wasn't nearly as respected or I wasn't as part of the team as they made it or like the coven will say. Um, whenever they first started the discord server, they had other community members run it or just help set it up. And at this time they came to me and they were complaining because they referred to it as like this fantasy land and they were tired, like they were embarrassed and they were just annoyed and grossed out by the content that was created on the Discord. And they either asked for my help, I don't remember girls, like, I don't, I don't know. Like they either asked for my help or I offered or it's like a mixture of the two of where they just wanted to like have the Discord fixed and cleaned up and get rid of the fantasy land that was created that they referred to it as. Um, but they never told the members that themselves that they didn't like it. And so they left it to me. And so they would tell me what they would want changed with the Discord and deleted and what have you. And I would do it, but it would be at the cost of I would be pissing off a lot of members because at this time I was just welcome, right? I wasn't part of the coven. I was just helping with social media. And so naturally when I was making changes, deleting things and all that, people would piss off at me. And Sally and Jamie never came forward and said that they that this is they were telling me what they wanted done uh, to everyone else. From everyone else's perspective, I was just making changes. Sally and Jamie never came to my defense. And so while I was getting just consistently a bunch of hate, it was a point in time I would just like go to bed with high blood pressure and wake up with high blood pressure because um, there would just be so much drama, so much heat that I was just receiving from people. And I, at this point, already was starting to have a lot of anxiety because I was just like, oh God, like what if I lose my job? What if I, you know, all this stuff is just running through my head. I was constantly just in fear of of everything and I didn't know how to manage it. And it got so bad to the point of where, rather than, again, Jamie and Sally just being up front and telling these people, being like, hey, we don't want this anymore. They instead were just like, oh, well, we'll just add you to the coven. So that way they'll have to respect you then, right? And so that was their way. And at that time, I was just grateful for it because I was just like, oh, you know, like, I again, I thought highly of them. I didn't really think too much about being like, oh, why can't you guys just tell them that, you know, um, so I was just receiving all the heat. And I guess looking back now, it makes a lot of sense as to why Sally would refer to me as a dog or her dog, actually, um, because I would just do her work for her while she would stand in the back as she always does and pl continues to place herself on this extremely high pedestal, pretending as if she's super accepting, super nice, super communicative, when in actuality, she behind closed doors would say very disgusting things about everybody, including myself and other people that she knows personally. Um, 
So I won't go I won't bother really going into too many uh, too many specifics with this because again, this would be such a long video. Um, so fast forward to March 2019. That is when I am now in Washington and I'm living with Jamie. I rent a room from Jamie, um, and we're about 40 minutes away across, just across the border from Washington to Canada, where Sally lived. And so at this time. From this point on, I just considered them like my, my real life friends, you know? I never fed into really like the whole, I never got lost in the sauce really. I never, you know, I've always just been very individualistic. You know, I don't, <laughs> to me, like, I just don't feed into that kind of special stuff. And so um, shortly after I started living there, there was this other long-term member that came and visited. Now this long-term member, I speak about this just because to give you guys a little bit more perspective and so you guys can understand fully why my mental, how I process things. There's this longtime member that I knew for a while, but they have known since she was 15 or 16 years old. And I know that they did because they said this and they s said that they sold um, a demon to her, a conjure to her, a sexual conjure to her when she was 16 years old. And this, she also at this time, at one point, lived with Jamie when they were in New York, when Jamie and this individual lived in New York. This individual is, I think, like 17 or 18, right? So this, they have a history, longer history than I do. And when she came to visit, during this time, the week that she was here, I believe, like, all they did behind closed doors was just trash on her, talk about how she just stunk or... Uh, how gross she looked, and they found it funny about how insecure she was um, about things. You know, just the entire time, whenever she wasn't around, they would just feed all this stuff to me, and I was just like, oh, okay. And so um, I stopped just talking to her for personal reasons, some personal reasons, as well as, you know, these two people who I uh, really respected just saying all this bad stuff. I'm just like, oh, okay, well, I guess I don't need to, like, engage with that either. And so it's, I point this out because from her perspective, like this individual that came to visit's perspective, they're all like, those three are like best friends. They've known each other for years. Um, she opens up to them about everything and they've just done nothing but trash on her. Even to this day, they've trashed on her. Like I can think like this up until this year, still they've trashed on her whenever she would open up and be being excited about making like a certain amount of money or what have you, posting a picture or what have you, um, sending them like personal, like lewd pictures, you know, like, you know, not everyone would know, but like she sent like lewd pictures to them because as like some close friends do, um, I've done it before, um, where you send like these like uh, sexy photos to your friends and be like, oh, like, is this like cute or whatever? They would send that, they would like mock about it and they would just insult her behind closed doors. But then to her face, they would just be like, oh, you're so gorgeous, like whatever, very just vapid um, compliments. And so um, I want you to keep this in mind of, this is like part of like I experienced this and I saw this and I was just like, oh, okay. And so after she left, I stopped talking to her, but then they still continued talking to her. And so I was just like, I kind of raised an eyebrow. I was like, okay. Um, and that's kind of right then where I kind of realized, started realizing that um, they don't really take friendships as seriously or they're not really as trustworthy as I thought they were. But at this time I thought I was just different. Um, don't we all think that, right? At some point with some certain toxic people. Um, let's see. So I noticed this pattern of where they would start playing from both sides. And it would also further explain why they would use these personas. Jamie and Sally would use the personas of Yulidra and Satira so they could continue on playing both sides on things. The very, it's very, very two-faced behavior. Um, there's again, I could reference so many stories that are similar to this of like how they would treat friends in this dynamic, you know, but again, you know, I'm just using like main examples just so you guys have a clear idea because I know many people might ask being like, well, Velka, why didn't you just communicate this with them personally? I tried. And even with the power dynamic. <laughs> I tried. Um, so at, going back, I rented a room from Jamie. 
Um, they were still my main source of income because again, I was going all in. Um, and so at this time, or I think I got it like a raise, I was getting like a thousand dollars a month, finally around like November or so. And so I was paying 400 to rent. Um, and so then I had $600 just base a month that I would use to survive. Um, more if I sold readings, uh, and so on. But I want to talk a little bit about power dynamics, um, because the power dynamic plays a very huge role into why I was in the position that I've been in. A uh, power dynamic where I was afraid of saying anything because if I were to piss them off, I rent a room from one of them. So I would be homeless while also them being my main source of income, my only income, because again, they would always make it seem like we're growing together. And so it was easy for them to give me that raise because when I'm giving 400 back to them anyways for rent, it gave the illusion that I was like going up with them when in actuality they were making thousands upon thousands of dollars a month and I was just receiving pennies. But again, I didn't think anything of it because I just fully trusted them and because that's just how I am when it comes to relationships. That's how I ended up, I guess, in, <laughs> in these type of situations because it's like, I just think the world of people, I love people. And when people will engage with me, I just feel so grateful that people are talking to me and that I just give my all. And so, um, yeah. And so I talk about this, I bring up this power dynamic and that I, anything that I did, I was very afraid in bringing up just because I didn't want to be homeless. And so um, I never felt like I could just hold them accountable. And also at this time, um, they, I want you guys to keep in mind that during this time of being their friend, they would call everyone a narcissist, including the, the girl that came to visit, this young woman now that came to visit. They would call everyone a narcissist. They're the type of people where they have this obsession with looking up personality um, traits and all of this just to quite literally manipulate better. Um, and so anyone that, they, essentially anyone that pissed them off or like inconvenienced them in a way, they're a narcissist. And so I knew deep down if I were to say anything or do anything, I'd be just marked as a narcissist. Um, along with also just thinking about being like, well, like they trash all these other people. What's, how am I different? Um, so that was the power dynamic that I had, that they had over me. And so that's why I had to deal with the amount of disrespect the amount of the treatment that I received because I didn't want to be homeless. And I know they know about that power dynamic because they fully took advantage of that power dynamic. Um, when I'm going to fast forward again and go to the start of lockdown, early 2020. And um, I had went to go to the bathroom. At this point, um, I... <sighs> I was like, I kind of was just neutral with them, but I went to the bathroom one day and this is really right at the start of quarantine and the bathrooms are at the time, like where I lived with Jamie, the, the walls are extremely thin and my bathroom was right next to Jamie's room. And so anytime I would go to the bathroom, I would usually just make some noise. Like I would start humming or like make some noise. So she would know that I was in the bathroom, um, because and this is not an exaggeration, like Sally and Jamie would just be on the phone 12, 14 hours a day talking to each other. And so I always would just like make some noise. So like if they're talking about something personal, you know, while she's in her room, like she knows that like I'm there, you know, so she can like refrain. But because Jamie always wears headphones, this is a key part. And I guess she doesn't realize like how loud she speaks and she doesn't hear uh, that when I'm, when I'm around. And so I went to the bathroom and I went to just have myself a little tinkle, honey. And I started hearing them trashing on me. Um, <laughs> and it's not the stuff that they said that hurt. I don't even, um, admittedly, I don't even remember everything that they said. Um, because one is just stupid. I know they called me a leech. 
Um, and just honestly, there's I've, there's been so many times now I've had to hear them just trash on me that it all kind of just like mixes together. So it wouldn't be fair for me at this point to like misquote during this time. Um, just they were just trashing on me and that's when my heart just sank um, because I got confirmation at this point that all these feelings I was having up until this point of like the small microaggressions and all that, that I wasn't, that they didn't actually like me. You may ask the question of being like, oh, well, Valka, why would they trash on you just for no reason, right? On the forum, it's again, it's so, it's all just so stupid. Like I'm going to keep saying it. It's all just so stupid. Um, on the forum, um, I don't even remember the conversation, but I basically posted an experience um, that didn't directly align with Sally's experiences, um, my own personal practices. And I also wasn't giving full credit of my experiences or of my ability to Sally's workings, to Sane and Sons workings, because before Sane and Sons, I still had a very rich spiritual history. Um, I was connecting to the, to the Goetia long before Sane and Sons even existed. So I want to make that clear as well, that Sane and Sons was not my introduction to demons like it was for Jamie. I've been working with the Goetia for quite a long time. Um, so I already had this background. I never really just like fed into this, like putting these people on pedestals because that's just not me. And so when I posted that, uh, it was a few days prior, I noticed that I was receiving the silent treatment and I was just being ignored. Um, in the group chat. And I talk about the group chat because there was never, in the years that I've known Sally, uh, there was never a single point in time that Sally ever messaged me personally. She never would speak to me one-on-one. -on -one. She would always just speak to the group chat and be like, oh, how are you guys? As if I'm not hearing them on the phone for 12 hours a day, as if I'm not hearing them on the phone while they are asking, how are you guys? They never got the respect of actually being spoken to of as an individual. Um, so I noticed I was getting the silent treatment and I, it's just one of those things where you, you kind of just felt like something was off, right? And so um, whenever I heard all this, stuff being said about me, um, I didn't know how to process it because I was just like, what do I do? I think I thought about the power dynamic. I thought about like, like everything was just racing in my mind. And I was just like, what, what do I do? Um, yeah, I'm emotional about it because it's like, I was like truly just such an extremely stressful time again for me. Like truly, like there's never a single point in time that I felt safe and secure me working with them and so whenever this was happening at the peak of quarantine i was just like oh my god um so for a few days i didn't say anything because i was just trying to process it but i finally just confronted them about it and i was just like hey do i need to move like what's up and so they lied to my face they lied to my face and they were just like, Jamie, just they use like manipulative behavior because I would open up to them about my family issues and all that. And so they just use manipulative wording being like, you what? You're just like a brother to us. Like, what are you talking like? What? We would never um, immediately turning on waterworks as if like they are the ones that were hurt. <laughs> And then they were just like, this. oh, it wasn't about you. It was about this other person, which, by the way, this other person, just like the common theme here, this other person thought that, like, from their perspective, that they those three are like a trio, like they're really close friends. And so them saying that didn't make the situation any better, even though I knew that they were lying. And so when they lied to my face, I didn't push it because I couldn't, right? Like, if they're going to lie, you're going to lie. And for me to push it, you know, like, again, I don't want to be homeless. I don't want to be without a job. And so um, when I did this, I immediately regretted it because I realized that um, I couldn't, you know, by me showcasing that I knew something that was the beginning of me being isolated. Um, and so um, 
during this time, whenever we were talking about it, she did, Sally did note, and so this is why I know this to be fact, Sally did note during the conversation that she was just like, oh yeah, because I even brought it up, I was like, oh, I felt like I've been getting ignored. And Sally even says like, oh yeah, I guess I was, um, I might have been a little bit upset by what you said and felt personally attacked, which is a common theme for Sally. Anytime that your beliefs don't directly align with hers, she took it as a personal attack and then would proceed to just have like meltdown after meltdown and just bashing the individual for weeks because I saw this with all the members. Um, there was even a single, a member, a mutual member who um, like they went to, this member went to, uh, <laughs> went to another person, the person that came to visit, she uh, took a course or uh, did a consultation with them, this member. And then the, per uh, the young woman told uh, Sally and Jamie that uh, this member was complaining to them about how she felt as if Sally was just dismissing her practices and she didn't really care for Sally. Like, she told the, told them this and then they responded with basically still continuing to gaslight this member with their outer spiritual world concept and continue taking money from her while also at the same time trashing her still because they were aware of uh, breaking that confidentiality, like all of them broke that confidentiality. And um, yeah, <laughs> um, so at this time, I know I'm like going all over and I apologize. Whenever the isolation happened, um, I didn't have anyone to talk to. The one friend I had, they also included into, and once they found out that I, that was my friend, they included them into the coven as well. So again, to give this, for those that always wondered, being like, oh, how can I join the coven? It's nothing special. It's literally just a matter of if they decide or not to. There's no, nothing interesting about it. And it's all just a marketing play. And so when that one friend I had that I could have potentially confided in, I couldn't confide in anymore because they were part of the coven as well. And I didn't feel safe. Um, so at this point, I was just trapped. At this point on, from that point forward, I would have to start playing ambient music. I would have to start playing thunderstorm music or just buy earplugs um, because to drain out the sounds of being woken up in the middle of the night or early in the morning to Jamie on the phone with Sally, just either trashing me or trashing another member, I would have, it, that's kind of where it all began. Um, so when I tell you guys that, um, <laughs> um, that this the whole experience for me, it's just been very, like, I don't have, like, I'm not going to be sitting here just presenting receipt after receipt after receipt because this is something I literally had to live with. I couldn't even sleep at night peacefully because of this. And I couldn't confront them about it because the one time I did, they lied to me. You know, they gave this illusion that being like, oh, if we have a problem, we'll talk about it, whatever. And they just don't. They don't. And it's like, if it wasn't about me, it was about another person that, they, again, that they were friends with or they would talk to. So it is further fed into this narrative of realizing that literally everyone they would trash on, everyone but them is a narcissist, everyone but them um, is crazy and doesn't have, like, actual spiritual experiences. And so um, Twitter was my only outlet at the time. And Twitter, I would just kind of just post stupid stuff. And during the height of the Black Lives Matter movement, um, I was doing some tweets and I said something about like how certain people just paid me dust, which is like a saying of where it's just like people weren't acknowledging me. Um, and it's stupid. But basically from that moment, um, I couldn't, I realized I couldn't tweet anymore. I didn't ha I couldn't have a voice um, anymore, as well as talk about my personal spiritual experiences because it would upset Sally. Because when I did that tweet, um, Jamie messaged me and she wanted to confront me. And then she was just like, hey, I need to talk, being very just morbid and being like, can we, can we meet in town or whatever, making just very much so trying to scare me and it worked. And so for like the next two hours, I was just like, having anxiety attacks and crying no matter how much I just begged Jamie to just like in text message be like hey just call me now like tell me what this is about 
um, she wouldn't. And it was a power move by them. It was a power move to get me back into this place of feeling small, of being scared, because they knew my position. This is how I, again, I knew that they knew about the power dynamic that they held over me. And Jamie would always be so proud and boast about how she used to work for MetLife in New York and how she's just so corporate. You know, like she would, that's like their thing. They would always just pride themselves on being so corporate and which is basically just being so fake. And so um, that's the kind of sh stuff that I would deal with. Um, and then when she came to me and then she was just like, well, what about this tweet where it's like paying you, like paying um, you dust, right? They made it like Sally made it about her. And Jamie even said, she's like, oh, well, Sally knows of this kind of, but she's too busy right now to talk. So I'm going to just talk about it with you. So I like, there was never a single point in time Sally ever came to me personally with an issue. She would always just trash the individual to Jamie and then Jamie would handle it because no one is, apparently is worth Sally's time. Not even someone that like me who literally watched their kids, who ate with her family, made wine with her father. Um, I was never worth the time of actually speaking to me personally. Um, I apologize again, like I know I'm probably jumping all over. Um, I have like some writings here just to reference, but I know I probably could have had made this more organized, so I do apologize. Um, but uh, yeah, it was during that time as well. Like they told me, Jamie told me as well. She was just like, we, we're not going to be able to, like, we can't pay you more. And they, she told me, it's like, we have no intentions on paying you more. Um, because they took me saying paying them dust as a sign of being like that. They took it as being like, they acknowledged that they didn't pay me that much. And then, so because they used that scare tactic. And then when they realized that it was just a misunderstanding, um, they took that time of where I was already extremely vulnerable, scared, and just relieved that the misunderstanding was taken care of. They told me, it's like, oh, we're not going to be able to pay you more. And so I, at the time, was just taking the breadcrumbs. And I was like, yeah, of course, like, whatever, because I just didn't want to be homeless again. Um, it was all just manipulative, extremely manipulative. Um, so at this point now, I'm closing my laptop, and now I'm going to be getting into some very real stuff. Um, about each individual in specific, because again, um, I brought up those scenarios just to give you guys an idea, but there's just so many times I could just reference for very um, abusive things that <laughs> very like manipulative and what have you. So I'm going to move on from that. And so I'm going to start directly referencing these individuals now and the issues and the behaviors that I had to deal with with both of both Sally and Jamie. So and I'm going to start with Sally. So with Sally during the height of the Black Lives Matter movement, um, during shortly after George Floyd had passed away, um, right beforehand and not too long after, um, I dealt with my own uh, police issues. Um, I, if you don't know, in Washington, um, it has a very high, um, I think it's like the home of the KKK. Um, there's like five black people that where I lived, um, everyone else is white. Uh, there'd be like white supremacy, uh, posters everywhere and they would put like razor blades behind them. So if you try to tear, tear it off, you would bleed. Um, the place itself, it just wasn't a safe place. Uh, basically, for me. And so, um, right beforehand, I had just a couple of police officers uh, stop me and harass me um, when I was just walking in a park. Um, and another time, like a couple of weeks after, I was riding a bus home and I had police officers just chase my bus down and have me put my hands up and yell at me because... I looked familiar to somebody that did a shoot and run, which was just another black person. And so at this time, I had all these experiences happening to me. They knew about this. Um, and their response to this was to have meetings. They wanted to have meetings. Sally in specific wanted to have meetings to talk about overpriced courses, which she is now selling, um, $800 courses for guided meditations that she gets done the night beforehand. 
um, and these overpriced retreats. That was her, that was their response. That was their response was um, just having meetings, not even the, and I would tell them as well, like, I would just be like, <clears throat> you know, I made it clear that I just wasn't really doing okay. Um, but I wasn't just like, I didn't want to be put in this position of, um, admitting that I was breaking at this time. I don't want, I don't, I don't, shouldn't have to say that I am broken to not be forced to go to a meeting that has nothing to do with me because they never included me in any, any type of, like any type of thing anyways, because they never respected my practices. And so... I had to just sit there and listen to them <laughs> and and just deal with the performative activism that Sally was doing. Um, now she she messaged me once at this time, and then she was just like, "Hey, it sucks that you're going through this." And they posted a black square on the Instagram, and that was, I guess, like enough for them, right? And um, during this whole time, as you know, during this pandemic, um, I'm, you guys, everyone can have their own opinion to like, whatever, like, I don't care. I really just don't care. Like, it's not my business. But during this whole, the height of this pandemic, when everything was going down, I would hear nothing but Sally spout off about how she wishes the people that are just going to die just to die. That she wishes that herd mentality just took over so that like the border, because basically the only thing that inconvenienced Sally was the border was closed so she can't just directly just go to Jamie. So that was the only thing that inconvenienced her life because she has no life outside of Jamie. Neither of them do. Um, outside of each other. And so she, Sally's just sitting here talking about how she just wishes people would just die. And she knows that this time as well, that my mom, who is a doctor, is on the front lines in Texas and giving vaccines while immunocompromised herself because she survived breast cancer um, and went through a whole lot of radiation. My mom was pushing herself I'm sorry, my mom was pushing herself and um, at the time was also in the hospital for internal bleeding, um, which they couldn't figure out because she was just pushing herself so much. Um, they knew this. She knew this. And she would still, I lost to someone I used to work with from, from COVID as well, shortly during this time as well, who I really worked with. Um, was close to rather, and I even made a post about it. Um, and so during this time, I would just hear almost daily about how Sally just wishes that people that are going to just die, just to die. Um, I couldn't open up about it at all to her, or one, because of the power dynamic, and two, because I literally listened to Sally talk about how she was judging her father and her stepmother, who are in their 70s, I'm pretty sure, um, saying it's like, oh, I don't know why they're taking this so seriously. Even if they got it, they'd be fine. So if she's not even concerned about her own parents' lives, why would I expect her to even give a single crap about mine, you know? I'm doing this right now, so I'm going to be putting this in, but I also wanted to really mention during this time that when Texas went through their power outage during the winter time, um, the, Sally and Jamie have always known that I'm from Texas. That's when I, how I met them was I was in Texas, and when everything was going down in Texas, people were losing their lives because there's no electricity. Kids were really, literally freezing to death because Texas homes are not made to stay warm because you're in Texas. And um, whenever everything was happening, there was, uh, Sally was on the speakerphone with Jamie, because again, they're on the phone 24 seven and they're making jokes about Texas when they know I'm from Texas, when all of this was going down, just calling Texans stupid and not knowing how to survive the cold. When people are literally losing their lives, my family who lives in Texas, all my friends, like everyone that I know is in Texas and not a single time just being like, oh, hey, Velka, Patrick, are you, is, how is your family, your friends, are they okay? Like, no, they're just making jokes. 
And when I said something, I was just like, these people like saying, it's just like, they're not stupid. Like this is a very, like people are losing their lives. And again, the very few times I spoke up, I quickly regretted it because you know, that silence where you're just like, cause that's what happens. So I just got silenced. It wasn't like an, I'm sorry or anything like that. It was just like, a, Oh, and it's just like silence. And that silence to where it's like, not just like self shame, but it's that silence of being like, Oh, why did you have to like ruin the moment? So I wanted to put this in just to show you to showcase to you guys, just how much of whether they just completely lack empathy or they just don't give a fuck about me and my feelings and my experiences since the very beginning, I really feel like it's important for me to showcase just how much they just don't care about other people's lives to even just, just be making jokes. And I've had, and I had to just deal with this type of stuff constantly and I couldn't ever say anything. And during this time as well, of course, we had meetings talking about overpriced courses and stuff like that. And they would make jokes during this time when my mom was literally in the hospital. And I would open up to them about it, like, the day beforehand. They would make jokes about death um, on the call. And I just had to just sit there. I, get, I never felt more disrespected and just disregarded for my own existence. And... Um, I just never heard anything from, like, and never, there was never any type of, like, empathy presented for me. And I never just asked for it. Like, I never, I don't feel like I should have to just be, like, there's just certain things I feel like I shouldn't have to just say that isn't okay. Um, she even found it, like, hilarious when, uh, one of her siblings, uh, who works in the hospital, like, he was walking out of the hot. She laughs about telling this story. She finds it so hilarious about how her brother was leaving the hospital when she he is a nurse, and um, he got a call, like on the overhead speaker of the hospital, saying it's just like, oh, his floor was potentially like a co like he may have been exposed to COVID, but because he had a vacation that he wanted to go to, he just started running out and didn't even get tested. And she found, finds that so hilarious. She finds it so hilarious that her brother uh, prioritized going to not getting tested to go on his vacation and potentially just kill other people. Potentially, um, even if they didn't, even if COVID didn't do anything, the long-standing effects that it might have on some people. Um, she finds it hilarious. So why would I? That's my position with that. You know, during this time, Sally has always just consistently hid behind other people, hid behind and ha allowed other people to do her dirty work. She would always just bash and just talk nasty about everybody, not even just her mem like the four members, but she would talk nasty about all these other practitioners. She literally pays $50 a month. Her and Jamie both pay $50 a month for Connolly's Patreon just to trash on it every single month when Connolly will send books and all that and be like, oh, we can do so much better, da 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 da. Like, they'll trash on her, they'll trash on VK Jahanam when he literally would shout them out and they would both just trash on VK Jahanam talking about how embarrassing and cringeworthy his channeling is. Like, he, because VK Jahanam does channeling videos. Um, they're trash on that when he literally would shout them out. They literally have him on the website somewhere as a source. And like Sally just has this like such a fragile ego, um, and such a victim mindset that every, she believes everyone's just personally attacking her. You can never communicate with her because she just swears that she's right and everyone else is wrong and everyone else is copying her and just extremely, extremely immature for somebody that's almost 40 years old, someone that's just extremely sheltered and privileged. And you can just tell it. she just exudes extreme privilege and just being extremely sheltered because she, Everyone else is always just taking care of her because that's just how she's she's always presented herself as this helpless, weak victim, which, I mean, I guess she is extremely weak considering what she's had to do to avoid actually dealing with any type of confrontation. That's what she does is extremely cowardly. She may write about how she has emotional and mental mastery, but she has anything but it. Anytime that a member would post that wasn't in direct alignment, she would talk about it for weeks on end, just trashing them. And so I would watch her 
as well as Jamie, also be very predatory, not only towards young individuals um, and allowing minors into their community, selling demons to minors in their community and exposing minors to these types of practices, which I never felt okay with. It wasn't, I wasn't, I was not part of the community um, or rather um, this wasn't happening until late into the game could cut because if it was already, if I knew this was happening, I wouldn't have even joined in the first place. Um, I watched Sally and Jamie both be extremely predatory towards a couple of clients who I'm going to try my best to keep their um, uh, anonymity is that who a couple of clients who clearly were exuding uh, schizophrenic traits, um, they would email her, them and talk about how they have these hauntings and need cleansings. Like literally there's one client who needed monthly cleansings um, and they would laugh and just like trash this individual, um, being like calling him crazy and acknowledging that he sounds like it's, he, he's exuding schizophrenic tendencies, but they would still take money from him every single month, hundreds of dollars to do these cleansings. And clearly after months and months and months of them not working, it just would feed it because you feed it into these narratives. You feed into this stuff with these people who are exuding these schizophrenic tendencies they because they make it seem like they're fixing this that th it's not like anything else that they shouldn't have to worry about checking up on their symptoms get worse and they just continue to spiral until one day they just disappear and that's what happened to one and now they're doing it to another person who they acknowledged again that initially when they reached out being like oh yeah they are kind of exuding some type of mental illness and um Instead of telling them to just go to get mental help, they, again, took it upon themselves to, because they have this God complex, and to say, doing these cleansings, tank, taking more hundreds of dollars, thousands of dollars from this, uh, tens of thousands from this individual, um, do these cleansings and doing the same thing. And now at a point, they are literally at this point in time, because, again, they fed into this narrative with this individual. Now he's sending... They are sending so many more emails and they're just ignoring them now. They're just ignoring the individual and they consistently would just gaslight them and be like, oh, well, because you're hanging out with, um, because you engage with the, these other practitioners, right? Like, which is basically competition, right? Because um, they engage with Balg and they engage with all these other practitioners. They put the fault on that be like, oh, you're allowing this in because of other things. It has nothing to do with, like, they never would admit, they have no sense of humility and being acknowledging, being like, oh, well, maybe this is not us. Like, they always just blame it on them. And so it just is this disgusting behavior of quite literally making these individuals who need mental help um, worse while taking their money and then just abandoning them whenever uh, they get to the point where they can't just like continue taking their money and they can't have any, they don't have any other excuses for why they're still dealing with these issues when they said that they did these cleansings. Um, and that just doesn't sit right with me. And I just want to make this very clear in that, um, I made no money off of conjures. I made no money off of workings or anything like that. I did not participate in any of that um, because I never asked to be taught it because, again, like, I never really... To be, again, personally transparent, like, th what they do, it just never really interested me um, entirely. And so I would just watch this from afar and I never could say anything. And I didn't know how to, how to even handle it. Even to this day, I don't know how to even help. I'm um, hoping in this video, maybe it'll, I don't know. I don't even know. It, I don't know. Um, and something, the last thing I want to mention with Sally, because again, I could talk about so many personal microaggressions that I dealt with her, with what calling me a dog, referring to me as a dog, um, constant just like anytime when it came to racial conversations making the conversation conversations extremely uncomfortable for me um and something i also want to note during this whole entire during this whole entire pandemic she has never once uh respected the um the rules of the lockdown because she lives in canada the border has been closed from canada to washington um because just keep containing things. And so Sally has numerous times broken the law 
of flying because it's meant for essential travel. She would literally fly from Canada to Seattle so Jamie could pick her up and then she could be in Washington for a week or two because again that's literally their life like each other that's all they have is each other right that's literally the whole it's not healthy it's literally their whole life and so numerous times she would just come flying down breaking the rules and never once neither of them would ever ask me if I was okay with it right for them their perspective because for Sally she swears her up and down that she's not racist um, but it's usually those type of people that are actually the most underground racist. And so because that she never respected Corona, she never, like, it wasn't a concern for her because when she could afford it, because she's making tens of pounds, thousands of dollars a month, um, that she, that she, so she could freely cover it. Plus having a full family that continues to spoil her and keep her sheltered and privileged, um, if she were to get sick, she could handle it. But she wasn't even considering her kids at all during this. Whenever she would uh, do all of this traveling, she never considered her kids during all of this at all. What she might be exposing to them. But they didn't think about how what they were even exposing to me either. While uh, Caucasians have less than, like, it's half, the, like, I forget that, and I'm put, like, a thing chart for it, but quite literally, like, her demographic is the least at risk for uh, contracting COVID, whereas people of color, color are more than double. And so um, it's just never has dawned on her mind. This shows you like the level of self-centeredness that Sally is, that all this pandemic has done for her was to have her business thrive more because it's all online and she no longer could just casually just go across the border to see Jamie. That's the only thing that's impacted her, but she's been the most vocal about how awful this pandemic is, um, but just wanting people to die so the border can open up. Um, just disgusting. And the last thing I want to mention with Sally is talking about the outer spiritual world, um, because this is a concept that she created because she wanted to find a way to manipulate people. She wanted to find a way where she could make her experiences be the be all by calling her experiences the outer spiritual world and then gaslight everyone else and their experiences to being the inner spiritual world. This is a very manipulative gaslighting technique that she's using and what a cult would do uh, where it's like the higher ups have this high level power that's very hard to obtain. You'll notice like with the outer spiritual world, they always make it seem like, oh, it's so hard to obtain to get to here, but they never talk about actually how to, which there's a reason for that because it doesn't exist. Jamie and Sally are only are the only ones that can get to this outer spiritual realm and uh, their experiences are the be all and they'll gaslight members into thinking that their exp experiences are inner spiritual world and basically like thought forms or Gregor, I don't even know, like it doesn't make sense. And so something I want to clarify and with uh, anyone that has been gaslit by Sally's outer spiritual world concept is that it's completely fake. And Sally, you need to firstly come to terms with the fact that you need to accept that not everyone is going to believe your spiritual belief system and your spiritual practices. And you need to start learning how to be more secure in your practices without having to find a way to gatekeep and put your experiences on a pedestal. There's a reason as to why there's not a single other practitioner that I even mentions the outer spiritual world. And it's because it does not exist. You need to come to terms with the fact that not everyone is going to agree with you. You need to get over your extremely fragile ego go and to stop injuring and damaging other people's spiritual practices just to fit your own ego just so you can feel secure in yourself what you are doing is extremely toxic it's very much you like it's the very opposite of what you try to confess and say that Satan and Sons is all about is just bringing awareness and educating people. You're literally gaslighting and making people feel lesser than because of a concept that you had felt like you needed to create to protect your own ego. The outer spiritual world does not exist. This is a concept that they created. I'm going to be showing a screenshot here of them referring to their outer spiritual experiences as true form. And something I also want you to note is they are so confident in saying that you will not be, you, that it's 
basically impossible to be connecting to outer spiritual realm beings. They're so confident in that, which is strange to me because if it's spirituality, if this is all just connecting to realms, how are you sure about this? If you're sharing this knowledge, if you're going to categorize your beliefs as demonosophy, which is literally just piggybacking off of 80% of Connolly's work um, and calling it your own, if you're going to piggyback off of it and define yourself as demonosophy, which is the only separation that you have, you should be able to talk about these concepts, share these concepts, and allow other people to connect to these concepts because otherwise you're just playing a Dungeons, Dungeons and Dragons game. And so when you are trying to um, limit people and say that it's impossible to do these things and you're trying to claim these species and all this as your own, all it really comes off as is dun Dungeons and Dragons. All it comes off as is made up imaginary shit because it is at that point. You can't claim a species. You cannot claim, make these claims and saying that no one else is, is able to connect to the outer spiritual world unless this is just an imaginary world by yourself. I'm not saying it's imaginary or not. I'm just pointing out the facts in that it doesn't, it, it, the math doesn't add up, Maury. So you need to make the choice in that either you are sharing these concepts and you're open to having, you acknowledge that other people can access this or you need to acknowledge that you are creating a concept that makes you and Jamie more powerful than other people just because you guys are fra you, uh, have fragile egos. You know, it's, it's bullshit. And you need to get over, you both need to get off this pedestal of thinking that your outer world spiritual experiences are a thing because it's not. I don't know at what point you got lost in this, but it's not real. And you need to stop acting as if your experiences are better than other people's. You need to stop putting down other practitioners and pretending as if that you're something more special or better than these other practitioners, Sally. You want to talk about all these other practitioners. You want to talk about Connolly's looks. You want to talk about Orly's looks. You want to talk about EA Coetting's, all these other people. You want to talk about all their content and the, how they're copying you and how they look and all this. When meanwhile, Sally, you literally copied uh, VK Jahanam's channeling concept while also copying my concept with doing pick a cards and connecting to the demonic divine um, for videos, copying both of us, not acknowledging either of us for this idea when I was the originator of this, especially, which I don't, again, I don't care, girl, because it's just like, whatever. But if it's like, I'm part of your own coven and you never at, w at one single time could acknowledge my own capabilities. You never once shouted out my website. You never once would shout out my own personal YouTube channel. There was never a single point in time Saiyan and Sons ever uplifted my own personal career. Some people found me through Saiyan and Sons, but there was never a single point in time that Jamie or Sally ever uplifted me. And so, Sally, you, I think we need to start looking at why you will take your video quality camera from 4K all the way down to f 240, 420 quality because you're so insecure with your own looks that you have to hire a professional makeup artist, getting your hair done professionally, while also taking your videos and putting, through, putting them through so many filters that it completely takes away the HD quality and it's down to 420 quality because you are so insecure with yourself, with your looks, with everything that you present, that you have to go through all these steps. Maybe if you stop looking at all these other practitioners and nitpicking and always constantly having something to say about them, you would finally be at a place where you're not spending hundreds of dollars to create a couple of YouTube videos a, a month. Maybe at some point you'll realize that you don't need to put on 50, 100 filters um, because no one cares about what you look like. The only people that are that insecure are people that are looking in, into the flaws of other people. Learn to start loving yourself and stop attacking other people because what it is that you are doing is disgusting. And the sooner that you actually come to terms with the fact of how awful of a human being you actually are, Sally, the better chance that you have at actually beginning to st starting to grow. You're almost 40 years old and you still act like you are a child. You have two children and they're already going to be acting more mature than you are very soon, which is why that you can't even take care of your kids by yourself. Whew, girl, I said I wasn't going to get personal, but anyways. <laughs> um, now I want to get into something a little bit more serious with Jamie before I close out this video. Um, with Jamie, I shared this on Twitter, but with Jamie in specific, she was very manipulative in that... Um, Again, she was the one that prided herself on being corporate, so corporate, so what have you. 
And so with Jamie, I shared a little bit on Twitter, but I am going to preface this right now that if animal, the videos I'm about to be showcasing onto the side, if animal neglect makes you uncomfortable, do not continue on with this portion because I, this is a part that is very important for me to talk about and for me to expose. I, as I said, I rented a room from Jamie for over two years, and during this time, she has a dog named Gus. She has two cats, Alistria and Tibby, and um, I had been documenting for over the past year um, of her neglecting her animals. I she would go weeks without changing their litter box, the cat's litter box. She will go over a week without giving her cats water, and I would know this because I would at night um, give the cats water in a separate bowl, and I would just look, pay attention to their water dish, and see how long it would take for her to fill up the cat's water. Um, and if I was if I wasn't the one cleaning up the litter boxes, then the litter boxes would get to the state that you see in the videos now. When it comes to her dog, Gus, uh, there's two spots that Gus lives at. One is in that cage with a couple cinder blocks because the cinder blocks are there because Gus will literally hit the cage and try to get out of the cage um, at, in the morning and at night or whenever he's just stuck there for hours. Or he will be left out outside on a small chain with, again, another cinder block where he has a small circle to exist where half of the circle is just filled with his poop because Jamie has never once taken this dog out for a walk since I've lived there, nor has she ever washed that dog. Um, and so, uh, nor did she ever pick up the poop. I would have to pick up the poop so that way Gus would actually have at least a little bit of space to walk around sometimes. Uh, I couldn't walk the dog myself because Jamie would not ever be comfortable with that. So I never could do anything uh, to help them besides help clean up the mess and give the animals things on the low key. And at this time as well, Gus never received any affection at all. So still doesn't. Um, I am going to also preface that I already did call animal control on her um, after I safely left. So for those that are concerned, I... I understand it entirely and when I left that's when I was the most worried for those animals because um, those animals have been dealing with constant UTIs because of the lack of water and how the conditions that they're in. Uh, Tiberius, her orange cat, literally uh, has experienced mental issues where he was biting off his tail, bleeding off of his tail, and she, instead of her actually taking care of the animal immediately, she would stick him in a cage uh, in his crate. Um, and just have him sit there with a bleeding tail and it getting infected because she just wouldn't take care of it immediately. Um, these animals are de like are degrading. She has a tortoise as well, which she never once took out the bedding, changed the bedding in the time that I was there. So that tortoise is just in uh, his own feces and never once bathed. Um, uh, Jamie has constantly i never felt safe talking about anything um on the phone i can reference like all my friends from the past two like years past um will know that i would go to town constantly so i would feel safe in actually having a conversation because my phone calls would be listened to i couldn't confirm it but i could t i could tell through living with her um and the final breaking point for me was well i'll, I'll Get back to that. Um, thing I want to point out and why I even point out this animal abuse, this animal neglect that's been going on is that Sally makes the comment constantly about how demons, she'll always be the one to say like, oh, demons don't like alcohol. Demons don't like weed. They're always finding this, these things that um, tobacco or anything like that, which coincidentally or not coincidentally, Sally doesn't partake in any of them because she has a, she's just against it for her own personal reasons. Um, so she always would project her own likes and dislikes on it. But one of them was also animal um, neglect and animal abuse. She always spoke uh, spoke of how uh, her outer spiritual demons uh, do not res do not handle do not agree with animal neglect and abuse. And so then it has me sitting here thinking, being like, if that's actually true, then what are you guys connecting to? Because you guys are offering quite literally a cameo's pet for a baby blessing. 
and Jamie is letting her animals live in these conditions for years. At what point does that make sense? If, if these concepts, these ideas of these outer spiritual world demons that you call them view this are this way, logically they should not be open to connecting with Jamie when she is abusing her animals. And so this is where I point out again some of the inconsistencies with all of this. I don't believe that if someone can treat their living animals, their sentient beings, in the ways that she has, neglecting them in the ways that she has, I don't believe anything that she does spiritually. I don't want to, if she is doing something spiritually to give her the benefit of the doubt, I don't want to connect with that if they are supposedly okay with that, but have an issue with alcohol, having being offered alcohol. You know, they both constantly would be very passive aggressive when it came to me smoking weed because I would self-medicate because that would be the only way for me to mentally handle things and calling me, like referring to people who smoke weed lazy or talking about how whoever like uh, dabbles in alcohol or any type of substance, how they're less spiritual. Oh, so I have the question of where does animal neglect, where does animal abuse rank on that? Why does animal abuse rank lower on that spectrum than offering wine or whiskey to a demon? Why does me smoking weed or someone drinking alcohol once in a while take away from their spiritual ability? That's all I want to say on that. Um, I'm going to wrap up this video because this video is going to be insanely long, uh, which is to be expected. But my breaking point during all of this was um, earlier this month when I was having a breakdown, mental breakdown, my final mental breakdown, and I was sobbing to my mom and to my best friend because this has been going on for since at the very least since the pandemic started earlier than that, that I would just be crying and just, I would consistently think that it was something that I was doing, something that was wrong with me. I was literally constantly just, any of my friends that have talked to me in the past couple of years, there's been a point where I would just have probably sobbed to them, wondering what was so wrong with me that they would treat me in the ways that they did. Um, and the my final breaking point was when earlier this month in August, I was sobbing to my mom and to my best friend, talking about how I couldn't take it anymore. I was com really com contemplating suicide because I couldn't just continue playing music. I couldn't continue playing sounds, knowing that like listening to them just trash on me and other members. Now they recruited somebody else. They included someone else into the coven who I literally watched them curse. I watched these Sally and Jamie curse this individual among other four members because they don't ever want to set boundaries. Again, I watched them curse this member. I watched them fat shame this member. I watched them literally, they would link her TikToks. They would post like link her photos talking about her skin, uh, everything that you could imagine during a time when she had her own storefront, when she had her own metaphysical store. But now they have included her to, uh, uh, later on is to par be part of the coven when beforehand they would always mock her for her spiritual ability saying that she's not actually conjuring saying how you know whenever uh they brought forward a con she gave them a conjure and said how it was fake um m laughing about her astral vision saying that like whenever she gave readings and stuff like that saying it's not real or anything like that but all of a sudden none of that matters whenever she doesn't have a storefront anymore when they no longer felt threatened by this person's existence and so then now all of a sudden i'm having to hear about how they love her so much and how they have all the crystals um in their space and how they just always just adore them and i'm just sitting here and i'm just like oh if you can say all this to the, this member who i literally listen to you guys fat shame skin shame the sh everything calling her disgusting calling all these members disgusting and you say how you guys love them so much that was the affirmation and going back again i was having a breakdown with my mom and my best friend on the phone outside i was sitting outside the house crying 
And then when I got back up and I went into the house, Jamie was standing right on the other side. I, I, if I was sitting right here, if I was sitting right here on outside of the house, I walked into the house, I guess she didn't see me. Jamie was standing right here with her phone in hand, texting Sally everything that I was saying. Listening in on my phone conversation, listening in on me having a breakdown, literally just sobbing, not able to even say a single sentence because I... I didn't, I didn't want to live anymore. I was, I couldn't even self-medicate any longer. I could, I was at my breaking point. And when I realized that was the wake up moment for me that snapped everything into place where I realized I wasn't crazy. I realized that this was actually abuse. I realized this is a cult. I realized every, everything that I always would pass off or I would always blame myself for. I realized in that moment, if you, if she could just sit there and listen so openly to my phone conversations, and then text Sally about them all when we lived together. And then that night I would proceed to hear for over an hour for the next week of them trashing me. I knew I needed to get out and I knew that was my time to leave. Um, and that's why I um, am here now. I am sorry that this video is all over the place um, it's not my intention. I know I could have been more organized in this, but I just needed to get this out. I, there's so much I'm leaving out. And if I need to, if, you know, comes this point in time, if I need to defend myself and they're going to try to like, as cults are, they're going to try to like make it seem as if I'm being dramatic or lying or what have you. If I need to, then I will get into more specifics, but this video is long enough. Um, I don't want to be associated with them anymore. I don't want to talk about this anymore. I am disgusted with the two individuals that they are now. For those that ask me about what I think of their practices, I can only tell you that if we're going to give them the benefit of the doubt, I don't know if they're, if the whole thing, if the concept of saying and sons and conjures and all that is real or not real. I don't know. If I'm going to give the benefit of the doubt and looking at this logically, going by own, Sally's own wording and references with the whole situation, I believe that this started out with good intentions and at some point in time, whenever their obsession with being corporate, their obsession with being a business and just scamming people with click tunnels, uh, click funnels and all of this, um, I feel as if whenever they lost their path, whenever they lost, got lost in their journey was whenever, I actually don't know. But if we were going to base, base these things off and just like facts alone, um, I would say that the legitimacy of Satan and Son stopped the moment when Jamie started neglecting and abusing her animals, if we're going to go through this logically. Because it does not make sense for you both, for them both to be connecting to these dark lords, to these demons, allegedly, while one of the main coven members that, and because those two split everything, they split, they do everything together. They split, like those, it's 50-50 for all the stuff, conjures and everything. The moment that Jamie started neglecting and abusing her animals, which... I have documentation for over the past year and a half, but Jamie would be the only one to tell you how long that she's been neglecting her animals for. That was that would be when I would say they no longer were connecting to anything spiritually. At this point in time, I don't respect anything that they put out. I don't believe anything that they put out based off of the fact that I just... How can you say that you're connecting to these deities? How can you say that you're offering these fur baby blessings for people's animals, their pets, while you're also neglecting and abusing your own animals? Um, and so that's just where I stand with all of that. Um, I apologize to anybody that ever felt that Satan and Sons was a safe space for them to be at because of my associa association. I know my association with the coven 
gave a lot of legitimacy to their business, whether they want to admit it or not. My existence, my presence in the business gave them the, leg the legitimacy that they desperately needed so they didn't come off as just a scam. Um, and I didn't realize that I was being used until it was too late, until I was what I felt like I was trapped in a situation where I had to make the choice of my own self-preservation over others. And it's not something I'm proud of at all. Um, I've always like professed on my channel about authenticity and um, just everyone's spiritual practices, being personal and all that. And so I know my sh publicly showing casing that I'm aligned with Satan and Sons added such a sense of security. And I so desperately apologize to you if you felt that Satan and Sons was safe because of me. I am ashamed of it, even though my reasonings for it was for self-preservation. I was too much of a coward to make myself more uncomfortable. I was too much of a coward of the fear of backlash that I would experience to help out other people. And so I do this video now, this extremely unorganized video now, to hopefully make amends for some of that to hopefully fix some of the damage that I caused in people's lives because I was the reason why they exposed themselves to the toxic cult that Saint and Sons is. Um, I want to tell people that are there now, you don't need to believe me now, it's okay. You can feel what you want to feel now, it's okay. I just make, make this video now for anyone that chooses to associate or work with Saint and Sons now or in the future to understand that you are never going to be part of their circle. They, that's their manipulative tactic to have people work for them and to give more of themselves than what they will pay or offer. You're never going to win. You're not different. Any feelings that you had, internal feelings that you had or internal struggle with how you're being treated but thinking that you are the crazy one, I know that feeling. I lived with that feeling for years. You are not crazy. I have this video here for anyone that at some point needs their affirmation of or this extra push to feel like it's okay to escape and to leave the cult that Saint and Sons is and that your spiritual path is still your own, whether just because it doesn't align with the fake bullshit that our spiritual world concept is for them. You don't want to align with that if that's their if if their outer spiritual world is so accepting of animal neglect and abuse then you don't want to be part of that. Um, but again, I'm not, I am not here to tell you whether, whether they're legitimate or not. I'm not here to talk about their practices and what it is that they personally do because, you know, if, if something works for you, something works for you. I'm just here to present the facts that I have and telling you how I'm connecting the dots for myself. If Satan and Sons works for you, that's fabulous, darling. I'm not here to tell you not to go with them or shop because whether you choose to work with them, whether you choose not to, it literally does not impact my life whatsoever. Um, I just ask for people to not ask me about them anymore after this. I This is a part of my life that I'm so ashamed of. Um, and to me personally, I don't care about what these almost 40 year olds are doing or will be doing those people those two individuals can't even look themselves in the mirror and like what it is that they see they're too terrified of even going on camera and showing their real selves so i really just don't respect anything they do i don't respect sally's practices i don't respect satan and son's practices because the only thing that separates demonosophy from demonolatry are these conjures which I don't think it's a coincidence that there's not a single video, there's not really actual any content talking about these different species uh, or any actual specific details on these things because it's all, she's extremely insecure about it. And whether, even if it's completely real, there's a reason as to why she's extremely insecure about it. I always tell people that I love astral projecting and I can speak so confidently in my experiences because I'm experiencing them in real time. And so, I can't help but sit and question why it is Satan and Sons has existed for so many years and why it's still at this point in time that Sally is unable to actually create any original content that separates herself from 
actual other creators. She's so obsessed with calling everyone else copycats when she doesn't realize that the entire essence of her, the content that she's posted is content from the majority of other people. Um, the, it just doesn't make sense for you to, cop to copyright or to claim these demon species so no one else allegedly can conjure them or connect with them without you being involved in that process or you, Jamie, being involved with that process. It's not logical to say that um, because it would be no different than anyone who uh, talks about any concept, right? When it comes to the Goetia, right? If, some, if the, those who founded the Goetia system or founded the Archangels concept of archangels would be no different than them saying it's just like oh well since i founded the idea of satan like you're not connecting with satan unless i say so or unless it's by my terms it's not logical if you're going to claim these species and copyright them and say that no one else can conjure and connect with them i feel as if there should actually be some more information out there if you should be able to confidently speak it um but that's just my own personal opinion. I just have noticed, as I said from the very beginning of this video, that there's just a lot of um, cracks when it comes to this uh, business that was built off of a lie. Um, and so I just, I'm not here to tell you what's real and what isn't because again, just like she can't prove to you that what she does is real or isn't real, I can't prove to you that what she's doing isn't real. And what their practices are practices and what they're doing aren't real now. I feel as if that what they started doing was real personally, but at some point it started just becoming about money. And I just want to say that the idea or the concepts that they paint of it being this conjuring being this complex uh, process, to me, from what I've observed, just from an outsider. It can't be too complex if they're just spending the entire time on their phone talking to each other while they're just doing scrolls and doing all these things. How they have just a giant drawer, allegedly, of just a bunch of demons to just list up whenever they need money. There's just... It, there's something about this that doesn't feel right. If you're going, if they're, they have this obsession with calling creepy hollows fake and that they're not actually conjuring because they, it's impossible for them to with all the conjures that they sell, with all the sales they do every single day, they say. But then you look at what they're doing, which is no different, but somehow what it is, but somehow they feel as if their practices are better, which is kind of the theme. But um, I'm going to close this video out because this is insanely long. Again, I apologize, um, but I don't want to address this anymore. I want to continue the rest of my life um, without them, um, and I will. I feel so free when I finally escaped the night that I did. Um, I can't even explain, I can't even explain even to this day now. It still doesn't feel real. It feels like a completely different lifetime. I still, like... The first night of me actually being able to just sleep on this bed without having to be woken up in the middle of the night hearing something awful about me, to be able to just sleep without having music playing, to be able to just like walk out into a room and not having to smell cat piss and shit everywhere. I can't explain how free I feel. And, um... I, again, just want to apologize for my association um, with everything. I have just been doing the best that I know how to at the time. Um, I, mean, I guess I should just address certain questions people might have. Um, so communication, I try to, and they lie to me. And from that point forward, I'm sure they considered me a narcissist like they do with everybody. So I didn't feel safe talking to them. You wouldn't feel safe talking to somebody that pay, like gives you your paycheck and you also rent a room from and seeing how they handle all the, you know, how they will just talk about Sally's husband even, or just like literally everyone in their life. So I didn't feel safe to do that. Um, I... When it came to the animals, I did my best in taking care of them in the in, as incognito as possible. Um, I tried my best in taking care of them the way that I could, um, but there was just a certain point in time where I knew I needed to 
let things happen so I could document it. So because I just know, even after this video, I know that even now when I first started leaving, they started like pretending as if like I'm just the crazy one making up things and all this, like I have some type of vengeance or jealousy as if I have anything to be jealous of, of two 40 year old women. Um, so I needed, I knew I needed to have actual evidence. If I were to just continuously just clean things up, then um, I wouldn't be able to document it. And so I already had called, I, the moment I left, I called animal control. So um, I haven't gotten any update on that yet though. But I did call animal control. Um, I did reach out to numerous uh, members and clients in private to let them know personally and showcase to them screenshots of things so people were on the same page these people that they thought were friends as I said um, because again I fed into this narrative I get, helped them maintain this illusion that they're a lot more trustworthy and a lot nicer than they actually are um, so I have just been doing my best in rectifying my part in it all and while my intention isn't outright fully to go after Saiyan and Sons, it's me just speaking my truth and giving people the treatment that I would want to be had. If I, I would want to know if someone that I thought the world of um, had nothing but nasty say, things to say to me. I would want to know someone that I was giving hundreds, if not thousands of dollars to. Um, I would want to know that my privacy wasn't being respected and being shared amongst other people while I still would be giving them money. I would want to know that my experiences would just be getting gaslit for their own uh, self-preservation. I would want to know these things. And so if by me having to just speak the truth in the um, about what Satan and Sons is about is directly affecting Saint, the cult that is Satan and Sons, I feel as if that is the responsibility of both Sally and Jamie to think about their own actions and like why their actions and why bringing just putting a spotlight on the actions that they've done and taking away the illusions is affecting their business in the way that it might be or might not be. I don't know. They could be thriving. Um, but that's, you know, this is not a thing of a smear campaign. This is a thing of just presenting the truth. And if the truth is damaging your reality, then I feel as if that says more about your reality than the actual actions themselves. So, um, I love you guys. Thank you so much for listening. If you did make it all the way through, um, <laughs> it's just so crazy to just be done with it. Um, I love you guys so much.